now next speaker dr s vaidya subramaniam distinguished organizers and uh, a wonderful audience of this type uh, which only institutions like nas can bring together uh, good afternoon to all of you i'm going to talk on a topic uh, education and uh, pedagogy for inclusive manufacturing and i am advised to talk for uh, 10 minutes on a topic that can have a two day conference but nevertheless i'll try and restrict my focus to three broad areas uh, one is to the current uh, momentum and the uh, focus that is building on the need for uh, uh, a resurgent manufacturing in india second is how that education is going to be the common link across different clusters and thirdly how that we need to have a very disruptive thought process the way in which we need to unbundle education to make it more inclusive from a manufa manufacturing perspective uh, all of you are aware that the genesis of this momentum for manufacturing started from the make in india movement late uh, 2014 which was in fact a response mechanism to address the growing turbulence of the global economy which started off in 2008 and then the failure of this concept of this emerging economies and then a very fragile uh, brics nation uh, economic uh, unity where india was sandwiched between a pair of two other nations and as uh, the world's largest <clears throat> democracy we cannot afford the world to look at uh, india and dismiss it as a fragile nation in a brics economy so we need to build a very strong and uh, india centric approach towards uh, manufacturing which many of us here will agree that has to necessarily be an integral part of an economic recovery and that's how this entire make in india that is spread across different clusters pharma agri defense retail automotive across different clusters and education is a cluster that is conspicuously missing the reason being very simple that it is that cluster that runs across all of these identified clusters so it is a common thread uh, that will run across these types of clusters but the way in which we are going to look at education as a contributor to these clusters is where the real challenge uh, lies you know the the common link education has been handled by the three different uh, uh, economic constituents agriculture service industry or manufacturing as i can call it the way in which education has been compatible with these three pillars of the economy itself is different that non formal education has been more compatible with agriculture and services i am not saying that those who are engaged in agriculture and services are not educated but the non formal education or those without formal education are easily compatible with agriculture and services with it being the largest exemption but on the manufacturing and industry the compatibility of non formal education somehow is not as pronounced as we see it when it comes to agriculture and services the reason is that somehow there is a feeling that manufacturing wants more people from a formal education system so i have a feeling that this fundamental perception has to be challenged and there needs to be a disruption in the thought process to make sure that more people from a non formal system engage into the manufacturing ecosystem and we need to build a lot of engagement models to make sure that this non formal education is integrated into the manufacturing ecosystem and that's where the real challenge is and i'm talking out of experience because when i meet students from iti and uh, diploma and i ask them that there is so many uh, jobs available in the manufacturing uh, industry why is that they don't prefer jobs but rather would like again to go to advanced degree programs and go for engineering uh, uh, degree programs and we find that the type of output that the engineering education is generating from this type of an input is getting uh, day by day poorer but when jobs were available to these people they are not willing to take it so we need to now fundamentally change the way in which the manufacturing ecosystem responds to an available product from a non formal education on one hand and secondly the way in which we are able to accept the way in which we are able to articulate the way in which we are able to acknowledge 
that a non-formal education is equally an important knowledge partner in the entire manufacturing value chain. And this is something that got reinforced in my mind at a personal level when I was attending an, an uh, function that was organized by Rotary Club in uh, Coimbatore. In fact, Coimbatore is known to be the entrepreneurial hub for the state of Tamil Nadu. There, uh, the, the function was to honor a self-made businessman and most of you familiar with Coimbatore, you can see many of them with the white shirt, white dhoti, driving Mercedes Benz and 80% uh, of those who run businesses whose average annual turnover is 100 crores plus, uh, the highest uh, uh, educational qualification they would have had is 8th uh, standard. So that is the level of uh, formal education that they have got, but they are the ones who give jobs to your IAMs and IATs and the products of the bigger educational ecosystem. So it was a function to felicitate that gentleman and there were renowned academics and we were also there and uh, the businessman in his, uh, in his uh, uh, speech said that he is not a product of the formal education system. He did not go beyond the fifth standard and then in a very humble way explained uh, his uh, successful pathway. And then also came another person with, uh, you know, uh, PhDs, publications and all of that and, uh, you know, uh, felicitated the businessman. After the function got over, all of us got together and engaged in a conversation. And this academic asked this businessman, how much have you studied? The moment this question was asked to that gentleman, I mean, he, was, he felt so dwarfed. He felt that he was excluded from the manufacturing system itself. How much you have studied? That question, after having heard to him that he, everybody knew that he did not study uh, beyond fifth standard. So the, the, the natural tendency for uh, many of us, uh, I wouldn't include you, but I can say uh, uh, me as an example, talking for myself, is we fail to ask the question uh, uh, to those who have studied so much, so many publications, double P PhDs and all of that, what you have done. But we, we go to somebody who has done so much and ask this question, how much you have studied. So here is this paradox that needs to be addressed. And that's why I felt that to make these people more inclusive into the manufacturing ecosystem, we will have to build an acceptable non-formal educational mechanism. And this is what we wanted to experiment at uh, our university. I come from Shastra University in Tanjavur. So we started to uh, provide programs where the eligibility criteria of those who join our programs, and these are specifically programs designed to address this growing uh, requirement of skilled workforce, where the eligibility is that it has to be necessarily students from a socio-economically challenged background who have failed 10th standard or 12th standard. So they shouldn't have passed 10th or 12th, they should have failed 10th or 12th and we pick those students. So we select students in batches of 40 and give them free training program, six months or one year. And we wanted to do it in certain areas that are more relevant to the immediate ecosystem in which we operate. A BHL is a very big manufacturing hub there. So you had the, the, the demand for welding. So we decided that we will have a, a skill program on welding. And then we also started uh, one to address a growing demand for drivers. So we had a driving program, uh, a skill development program on driving. So the one thing that we consciously took a decision is that we would like to use as much as possible technology in this initiative because to scale this we felt that technology is going to be a very powerful disruptor. So if there are many institutions who also do all these sorts of things in their own capacity in different geographies across the country. But if we need to build a scalable ecosystem then we cannot rule out the powerful intervention of technology. So that is why we have these uh, welding simulators which were indigenously developed in collaboration with the TCS which replaces an alternate solution that is available that is imported which costs you around 15 to 20 lakhs uh, but we developed our own welding simulation system at a cost of rupees 2.5 lakhs so that we can use it for our training program that reduces the use of real consumables. The student gets to know uh, the hands-on experience before a simulation product and then starts using the real consumables. That way we reduce the rate at which consumables are used. And it's the same thing we also did it for driving simulators. So we give the students uh, uh, the, the first opportunity to understand uh, how a road is, to get uh, the psychomotor skills uh, 
uh, before a simulation environment on driving and then give them the real vehicle so that they can uh, uh, learn it in a more appropriate way. But these are just the two examples that we started off and now the third one is we are trying to build an online uh, exchange for the uh, textile cluster in a place that's close to Tanjavur, Kumbagonam, which is a textile cluster where we are now trying to bring, uh, we are trying to aggregate all stakeholders in an online exchange where the design can happen there, the sourcing can happen there, the, uh, the final end product can be done in Kumbagonam, the delivery can happen elsewhere in any part of the globe and we try to build an online exchange. So these are three experiments that embolden us to start a massive project and we call that project as Revere, which is rural empowerment through vocational and entrepreneurially reliant ecosystem. We felt that to make manufacturing more inclusive, we need to go and address certain unaddressed pockets in rural India and create an environment that provides a sense of economic and academic empowerment. So that's how this entire concept of Revere, which in, in our uh, plan in the next three years, we plan to train a thousand students of this particular background in different skill areas through a three month and a six month uh, training programs free of cost in these training programs and the one that I talked before we give the students stipend of uh, 5000 rupees so that it takes care of their day to day travel and uh, the learning resources that they have to consume this way we will give them an opportunity to either get a gainful first employment or give them the tools to start on their own and this is where the real economic empowerment happens but to make this happen you know we need to kind of uh, come out from this regimental thought process that it is only products of formal education system that is compatible with the manufacturing ecosystem. Things are changing now. Many people want skilled workforce and there are a lot of success stories like this happening all over the country. But we also need to have the sense of academic empowerment to identify those who are already skilled. You go to any rural area, there are people who are not products of the formal education system, but they are open our universities themselves. And universities like us, actually, we will have to go and meet them and award a degree. In fact, to that extent, they are already knowledgeable. And we tell them that you are not products of formal education. That's injustice to them. But on the second one is we need to identify people from this socio-economically challenged background and give them the necessary skills and certify them. And the certification process is an academic identity for a skill that they acquire through a non-formal education and that certification is what these type of students actually earn for. And to make this process very simpler and to conclude my speech, I just have a 3D, a three-dimensional uh, perspective to make this happen so that you have an inclusive framework. One is from a governance point of view that you need to deregulate completely the way in which skill training is given to those marginalized uh, people in rural areas. So we need to deregulate it. We need to digitize. So we need to bring the powerful force of technology as a positive disruptor so that scalability can be achieved. The third is to democratize, to make this teaching learning more participative. So in my view, the type of education and pedagogy that is required to make the manufacturing system more inclusive needs to be three-dimensional with the deregulation, digitalization and democratization. Thank you very much. Thank you.